Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper with this Amplitube 4. Okay, I did the main review and tutorial for this um, yesterday, I think it was. But let's go a bit deeper. There's some extra things that uh, we can do. Now, in the main review tutorial, which is on our channel, I explained that when you load a preset from here, from any of these folders or the subfolders, right? When you load a preset from there or from the preset browser, you're loading the entire rig. Pedals, amps, insert effects, cabinets, the output effects, the whole rig is what you're loading, right? But then I showed you, let's say load the default rig. Then I showed you that if you want to load a, a, an actual amp, just the amp, only the amp, into an amp slot, right? You go to the little drop down menu at the beginning of the amp and you load the actual raw amps. Right? These are the raw amps. Okay, so let's 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 do this. I will load up um, this Brit Silver amp. There it is. I've loaded this raw amp into this default configuration, which is a single amp configuration with a single cab, right? Now then I, I tweak the amp. Um, I'm not going to listen to it while I do this. I'll set the input gains fairly high. Um, I set it like that. Let's say that's a scooped out sound that I've made. I'm not going to listen to it as I said, but I've made a scooped high gain sound. Now I right click anywhere on the background of the amp, but not, don't right click on any of the control um, pots. Right click on the background, and if there are any presets for the, only this amp, right, I can load them from here. There are no presets. Save model preset. And I'm now saving a preset only for this Brit Silver amp. So I don't need to put the title of the amp into the into the title of the preset because the preset I'm saving here is only for this amp. So I can call this high gain scoop. Right? Boom, I've saved that preset for that amp. So I'll just change the settings now. Because Amplitude, if you don't use this amp in another rig and you go and try other amps and then come back to it, Amplitude will actually remember the last settings that you set for it. So then let's say I'm using a two amp rig and I go here and I load up that same amp. I just right click on the background and I can load my preset, high gain scoop. That is how you load and save presets for individual amps, right? So let's say this amp slot here. I load up the red marshal. Right click, I've created a preset, two in fact. Gain, deep scoop, and another one called middle treble honky gain, which has got no bass and all middle and treble, right? Okay, so if I wanted to save another preset, create it how I want it, let's say like that, and then I'd call it, I'd do save model preset, and I could call it something like honky clean um, or something save and it's now available as a preset only for this amp right okay that's how you save and load presets for individual amps now let's reset the default back again now let's go to the cab page now there's a default cab when you load the default rig this is the default cab you get with it now again cabinets individual cabinets can have presets saved so if I go to this Red Marshall cabinet, it loads that cabinet into the default room with the default mics in their position and the default overheads, etc. I have created a preset for this Red Marshall cabinet. So I right click and it could be anywhere on the background. It doesn't have to be on the actual cab. Load preset. There is one I created for only this Red Marshall cab. And it's called Studio B Ribbon Ambient 414 which means it's this cabinet, but in Studio B with a ribbon mic as the main mic and a pair of ambient 414s over the top. That's what I called it, bam, there. And it loads all the configuration, ribbon mic. All right, this is the way that I've loaded up the mics. The ribbon mic, slightly off axis, the second mic further away and down at the bottom. So it's picking up some of the bottom speakers. And then this particular configuration, 
it uses the stock speakers I think yeah the stock speakers so that preset was just for this red cabinet and it loads the configuration of the mics in whatever position the overheads whatever spacing and the room and the entire mix on the mixer the individual levels pans for the two mics the, the level and the width for the overheads any di that you might want in any phasing that you've switched and the main output level so it's loaded the entire room and mic configuration to go with that cab All right so if i go back here and i choose um, this metal cab there it is right click i've saved a preset for this so load model preset dark venue ambient and it loads up dark venue ambient now i've called it dark venue ambient because it's the live venue room right in terms of the mix i've got some ambience i mean i'm, I'm not going i've got the overheads up too high but they're well spaced apart so it's given me more of an ambience from that live room sound and I've called it dark because I'm using the dark speakers, the EV darkness speakers in the top two slots, not the black speakers. Actually, they're all um, they've all got that. So I changed all of them. Yeah. So I changed the speakers to these darker sounding EV darkness speakers. Set up the mic, set up the overhead, set up the room, and that's a preset, but only for that cabinet. All right. So let's reset. Okay, so let's make one from scratch. Um, we'll go with this box, right? Then um, it's 12 inch, so I could change the speakers, but I'll leave them as they are. Go to the mics. I'm going to have my main close mic here. I'm going to make that a ribbon mic. Then my ambient, and I'll keep it on axis exactly there. Then my ambient mic there. I'm going to have it further away like that. Okay, so that's that. And then um, I go to the room. I'm going to have it in the booth with my overhead space quite a bit apart. I'm going to use the C12s, let's say. Then I go to my balance here. I want quite a bit of room, a little bit less of, of the close ribbon, whatever. Pan the two slightly apart like that, whatever. There you go. I've built a set of settings around that cabinet and only this cabinet I right click anywhere on the background save model preset and there's no need to give it the title of the cab because this preset is only available for this cabinet so I'll call it booth wide um, ribbon or something BAM saved and now just reset the default <laughs> at any time if I go and choose that cabinet <coughs> was it that one no it was the other one there was a couple of box like ones it was that one wasn't it the open vintage right click load the preset boom and it sets everything the room the mics the, the mix everything for that but only for that cab so that's how you load and save presets for cabs. And any, any cab presets I, I create in slot A are available in slot B, of course, as well. Right, same with the amps. If I create a preset for an amp, it doesn't matter whether I'm in slot A or B, I load up that amp, any presets I've created for the amp are available. Right. Okay, let, next to the racks. Now you've got the output pair of racks here, whichever configuration they're in, parallel or series, and you've got the insert racks. Now these are interchangeable. Any preset, any collection of effects that I say build and save in the output racks can be loaded into the insert racks and vice versa. Any combination of effects that I create and save as a preset for the insert racks can be loaded into the output racks. So there's an empty output rack. I right click, load rack, and I right click anywhere on the background, load rack setup, and there's four rack setups I've created here. 4K graphic lift with comp and reverb, delay and reverb short, and flange short delay small reverb. Now this one was created in this output rack. This one was created in the insert rack, so was that. But they're available here in the output rack. So I load that and it loads up that preset, which is called 4K graphic lift. 
comp reverb because it's got a 4K graphic lift, there's some compression and a reverb. Now I created this preset in, the, in an output rack here, but if I go to one of the insert racks, I can load it into here as well. They're interchangeable. Right? Any presets you create in either rack is available in the other racks, insert or output. Right? So let's reset default. So I'm in the output rack here. Look, I just create, let's say I put in, um, let's say a chorus with whatever setting, and then I'll put in um, a tube compressor. Right, not too much. That'll do, right? A compressor, a compressor, and a chorus. Right click anywhere on the background, save a rack setup, and I'll call this chorus comp subtle because it's not too much chorus and it's not too much compression. Bam! I've saved that. That's the, the entire rack. Both these effects with whatever settings they've got. Now I can load that into any other rack. Load rack setup, there it is. Chorus comp subtle. Or I can load it into any insert rack. There it is, chorus comp subtle. And vice versa, if I create a, a, a rack in the inserts, it's available in the output racks to load, right? Okay, that's that. Now the other thing is, um, I can save and load presets for individual rack effects. Now, some of the rack effects have got factory presets. So if I go to this, um, let's let's clear it all down again. Go to this rack. It can be either rack, doesn't matter because the effects are the same. And I load into here a digital reverb. Now we know if we right click anywhere in the rack, that allows us to load or save the entire rack setup. But if you want to load or save a preset for the individual unit, you must right click on the background of that individual unit. Do not right click on any of the controls. So anywhere on the background of this reverb, I right click. I've still got the load rack setup and save rack setup because that appears wherever you right click. But if I right click over this unit, I've also got load model preset or save model preset. There is a model preset for the digital reverb I created already called medium hall short decay. Bam, load it and that's the settings. All right. So let's change this for the delay. Again, right click on its background. Load model preset. Now this one has got some factory presets. These are all factory presets here. So some of these rack effects do have factory presets. These two I created myself. This is called eighth dotted subtle. Load it. And when I click on the BPM value there, on that, there it is, eighth dotted down there in the value box, right? So that's one I created myself. So that's how you do that. So if I was to stay with this digital delay, uh, change the BPM time, because I've got it clocked here. You can have it free in milliseconds or clocked. So let's say I make it 16th. Very short feedback, quite a trebly filter. I'm not listening to it, but I'm assuming that way is trebly, that way is less treble. Right? So a very, very short 16th delay with no feedback. Right click on the background, save model preset. And remember, just like with the cabs and the amps, I'm only saving the preset for this rack unit, the delay. So I don't need to give it the title of delay because it's only available as a delay preset. So I'll call this 16th slapback, because it's super short feedback. Um, bright, because I've got a lot of treble on it. Okay, and that's now available as a preset. Load model preset, there it is, 16th slapback bright, okay? So that's how you load and save presets for individual rack units, and it's the same whether you're in the output rack or in the insert rack, right? So if I go to the output rack here and install the digital delay, right click on the background of the delay, I can load any of those model presets. Right? Okay. Um, so look, there's the delay with whatever settings I'll now add in. Did I do this already? 
I'll now add in a pitch shifter. Let's uh, fix that at whatever amount. And then I'll add in a compressor. OK, now to save an entire rack that I've created, I can right click anywhere. It doesn't matter which unit I'm right clicking on the background of because I'm saving the whole rack. Save rack setup. And this is delay, pitch, pitch, shift, comp. Bam, saved. And now if I go to any other rack, whether it's an insert or the other output rack, right click, load rack setup, there it is. Um, delay pitch shift comp. So that's saving and loading whole racks and saving and loading individual presets for individual rack units. Right. And it's the same with the stomp box pages. Load up some pedals. Oop. Let's have a compressor. Followed by. Followed by a chorus. Actually, I'm going to change this to a fuzz. Right, with whatever amount of drive. Right. And then adjust the level of my of my chorus. And then I don't know what else we'll have in here. Let's have in a not a not a not a wild distortion. We've got a distortion there. Let's have a um, where's was any was in here? Filter would be under, won't it? Envelope filter, yeah, wah. Okay, basic wah. So I've got a fuzz, a chorus, and a wah. Right click anywhere on the background, but not over the top of one of the units. Well, you can right click over the top of a unit, but the point is you want to do save pedal board setup. If I right click over the background not on a pedal, I only get the ability to save or load a pedal board, not load the model. But if I right click over a model, I'm also uh, can load a model or save a model preset for the individual pedal will come to that. So you right click anywhere on the background and save pedal board setup. And I'll call this one fuzz chorus wah. Boom, done. And now I go to the other stomp box page. Load pedal board setup. Fuzz chorus wah. Easy peasy, right? So say I add in another pedal now. What's this OCD one? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's say I load up something different. I don't know. Um, an envelope filter. I set it to a particular settings, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I want to save a preset for any individual pedal, it's the same as when in the racks. You right click on the actual unit. Right? So I right click on this actual envelope filter somewhere, but not on one of the controls. And then I can do load model preset, and there actually are some presets. These are factory ones. There's three presets there. Or save what I've created. And save it, and I'll call it, you know, oh, I don't know. What can I call it? Um, I'll call it uh, wide filter or something. I mean, it can be anything, right? Bam. And then it's available as a preset. Load model preset. There it is, wide filter, right? OK, so that's saving and loading presets for the pedal board altogether and for individual units. So this is, yeah. So we can save presets for our, our individual amps. We can save presets for our individual cabs. We can create whole rack presets insert or output, we can create whole pedal board presets, and we can create individual presets for rack units or for individual stomp pedals. Right. Now, um, there's more. If I go to this rack or to this pedal board, let's say I if I right click on the actual on a control, let's say I go to the amp. Right, let's say I right click on the reverb control here. Right, you right click on the background to load, load and save presets. 
But if I right click on this spring reverb control, I can then assign an automation slot to it. Remember from the previous tutorial, there are 16 automation slots, which you then select in your door automation to control a particular parameter of the rig, right? So I can right click on any control, right click on the spring reverb and assign it to one of the automation slots. And then if I choose that automation slot or that automation parameter in my track automation, I will be automating the amount of reverb, right? Um, if I went to the rack effects here and chose the feedback control for the delay and right clicked on it, I could assign that that parameter, the feedback of the delay, to any of the automation 16 parameter slots. So if I assigned the feedback of the delay to automation parameter slot 2, then if I select that in my door automation, I'm adjusting, I'm automating the feedback of the delay here, right? So that's where you assign these controls to the automation slots. But also, if I right click on the feedback here, I can assign it to a MIDI controller. So if we go back to the pedal board here, if I want to assign this wah pedal movement to a MIDI foot pedal, so I can actually move the wah with my foot as I play, I right click on this parameter of the pedal, the actual pedal that you move, right click and assign it to a MIDI controller. Learn wah. Now it says waiting for MIDI input, so I just move my MIDI foot pedal and it learns it, and then when I move the foot pedal, I'm controlling the amount of wah. So any parameter for any stomp box, any rack unit, or any amp parameter can be assigned to an automation slot, one of the 16 automation slots to automate with your track automation, or to any MIDI controller. Learn, twiddle the pot, or move the pedal, or whatever, and that pot or pedal will then be controlling whatever parameter yeah so any any parameter of a stomp box any parameter of an amp any parameter of a rack unit can be automated assigned to an automation slot or given a midi cc controller now as far as the cabs are concerned i don't know if you can do something like moving the overhead spacing like that no you can't there's nothing to automate here okay well what about these no Okay, so there you go. There's a bunch of extras. Uh, saving and loading presets for amps, cabinets, rack effects, and stomp box pages, and loading and saving individual presets for individual rack units or stomp boxes and assigning MIDI controllers or automation slots to individual parameters of amps, rack effects, or, or pedals. Okay? It's just more juicy stuff you can do. It's pretty cool, huh? And there you go. That is how you do all that.